Hi friends, it's good to see you. We've been talking about clouds and the water cycle in uh, my Zoom classes. Um, this book is called The Cloud Spinner. This is an imaginary book about clouds, not, not factual at all. <laughs> there was once a boy who could weave cloth from the clouds. He had a spinning wheel and a loom on top of a hill. Oh, you can barely see him, he's so tiny way up there. As the clouds passed with a whir of the wheel, he would spin them into thread. Gold in the morning with the rising sun, white in the afternoon, and crimson, which is a deep red, in the evening, just as his mother had taught him. Then, with a clickety-clack of his loom, he would weave the thread into cloth. As he worked, he sang a simple tune his mother had taught him. Enough is enough and not one stitch more. The boy was wise. He spun just enough thread and wove just enough cloth to make two scarves. One of pure white he wore over his head when it was hot to protect him from the sun. The other he wore when it was cold. It was a twist and twirl of gold and white and crimson, soft as a mouse's touch and warm as roasted chestnuts. His mother had taught him well. One chilly market day, the boy walked down the hill, a basket in his hand and his scarf around his neck. The market was full of great excitement. The king was on his way. Kind of like a farmer's market only took place a long, long time ago. Soon the king rode grandly by, hardly noticing the curtsies and cheers. But what his greedy eyes did notice, greedy means somebody who wants everything, was the wonderful scarf of gold and white and crimson. There's the boy wearing his scarf. <clears throat> Tell me, boy, where can I get a scarf of such fine cloth? Nowhere on earth, the boy replied. Then how did you get yours? Snapped the king. I made it, said the boy. Then you will make another for me. A longer one, much longer, for I am the king. But the boy said, it would not be wise to have a long scarf made from this cloth. Your majesty does not need it. How dare you tell me what is wise, shouted the king. I order you to make me my scarf. Boy, he's not, not a very pleasant king. So the boy went home to the top of the hill and with a whir of the wheel began to spin. He spun the clouds as they passed in the morning and were gold in the rising sun. He spun in the afternoon as the clouds sailed past, white as snowdrifts. He spun in the evening when the clouds were crimson. Then with a clickety-clack of the loom, he wove the thread into a long, long scarf. The king was overjoyed. His scarf was soft as a mouse's touch and warm as roasted chestnuts. Now make me a cloak of this glorious cloth, he ordered, and dresses galore for the queen and my daughter, the princess. But the boy shook his head. It would not be wise to have so many cloths made from this cloth, so many clothes, excuse me, made from this cloth. Your majesty does not need them. The king's face was a twist of scowls. I want those clothes and I order you to make them. So the boy went home to the top of the hill and with a whir of the wheel began to spin. He spun the clouds as they passed in the morning and were gold with the rising sun. He spun in the afternoon as the clouds sailed past, white as snowdrifts. And he spun in the evening when the clouds were crimson. Crimson. He spun and he spun and it got harder and harder for soon there were fewer and fewer clouds. 
Look at that. Lots of clouds here, a few less, hardly any clouds there. At last, with a clickety clack of the loom, <clears throat> excuse me, the boy began to weave the thread into cloth beneath a cloudless sky. There's no more clouds. As he worked, he sadly sang, enough is enough and not one stitch more. There's no more clouds in the sky. The king was delighted. He put on the wonderful cloak and the queen and the princess each put on a beautiful flowing dress. Surely, he boasted, there is no other king as magnificent and wise as me. Not one, said the queen. The princess said nothing. But day after day, as they wore their marvelous clothes, not one drop of rain fell from the cloudless sky. <gasps> if there's no clouds, there will be no rain. We learned that. <laughs> Your majesty, pleaded the villagers, our animals are thirsty and our crops are all dry dying. There's nothing I can do, shouted the king walking this way and that, his cloak trailing behind him. Why are you moaning to me? The princess said nothing. But that evening, she quietly slipped out of the palace. She wore a simple dress, and in her arms was a bundle, soft as a mouse's touch and warm as roasted chestnuts. She crossed the dry, dusty gardens and the brown fields beyond and climbed to the top of the hill. Stepping forward, she knocked at the boy's door. Is it too late to undo what has been done? The boy smiled and said simply, there is still time. They're putting clouds back into the sky. When the king awoke the next morning, he could not find his wonderful cloak. The queen could not find her beautiful dresses. They searched the palace for the clothes that the boy had made, but they were gone. While outside, the villagers danced for joy as the rain began to fall from the clouds in the sky. It rained and rained and rained. The king and the queen looked out and wondered. Do you see how on this hill, it looks like a face, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth? I noticed that at the beginning of the book too. The hill is smiling. And the princess with a smile as bright as a rainbow stood on top of the hill and sang, Enough is enough, and not one stitch more. There's the hill smiling again. Thank you for listening to the cloud spinner. Oh, there's another smile. I noticed that at the beginning of the book. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this story. Have a great day. Bye.